Welcome back. It's uh, Tuesday, March the 22nd, 2016. Our guest in this segment is Dr. Trevor Hancock. Uh, Trevor, you're, you teach, you, or you're involved in public health, I guess, at the University of Victoria and worldwide, yes. really. And we're going to be talking about, um, to start with, the U.S. election and Donald Trump, and I guess the connection to public health issues. Yes, well, indeed. Yes. And um, I've been, of course, like everybody else, watching this sort of, I don't quite know what to call it. I suppose at some level a, a bit of a disaster, a bit of a wake-up call, some quite scary um, developments with, with uh, Trump. But everyone talks a lot about the Trump supporters, and they're, they're broadly categorized as being poor, white, angry, poorly educated. And if you go and look into that, it's, it's sort of broadly true. I mean, there's a lot of other people who vote for Trump at the moment. But what struck me is that at the same time as I'm reading that, I'm reading a report about um, a very worrying change in the health status of pretty much that same group of people in the US. And what has happened is that the death rate in uh, poor, white, middle-aged people in the U.S., particularly men, has gone up when all other cohorts and all other races, uh, because they talk a lot about race in the U.S., have been going down. So it's a, an abnormal blip and a very troubling one because it, it, I think, relates to some of the anger you see and the despair you see that I think lies behind the, that group of Trump supporters. A couple of weeks ago, CBC did a short thing um, on the news, and they, inter they went down into the state somewhere, and they interviewed some Trump supporters. And they were kind of a bit laughing at them, but I found it to be a very sympathetic look. And I could, these, you just got the feeling that these were people who were who were having a very tough time in the United States and yeah. in the United States the, there is no safety net I not mean, much if you fall out the bottom and it's just like it's getting to be here I really I, I mean and now here's Donald Trump he's talking about getting rid of the free trade deals which which are such a cause of unemployment in the United States yeah. he talks about health care for everybody he talks about jobs and he talks about you know a great country making a great country and I can see why a lot of people uh, and I think it's the same kind of people who are also supporting Bernie Sanders they're also against free trade they want health care they, they want a more uh, they want a better country and and they've completely given up on the elites of both parties and they're turning to people like uh, Donald Trump and, and Bernie Sanders yeah and I, I think it's a fascinating development but I from my point of view as someone interested in in the health of populations what I'm seeing is that relationship that I think that what we're seeing uh, is that as you say they have been very badly hit if you look at for example the um, the level of income and the level of employment of the um, of the middle-aged population who uh, have a less than college education or maybe even don't even have a high school education, their employment rates and their incomes have been dropping while people with college degrees and university degrees, their incomes have been rising over the last, the study I saw looked from 1990 to 2013. So this is likely to be related to the free trade and the export of jobs to China or to Mexico or to, to Thailand or wherever they're going. And so these people they've lost the American dream. They're, they have, they're going to be worse off than their parents, not better off, and that's kind of been the American dream. And if they're in their 40s and, and, and so, then it's, uh, or 50s, it's their children who have gone off to fight these lunatic wars that the yes. U.S. keeps fighting around the world. Yeah. And I'm sure that hasn't been pleasant for any of them either. So what you have is a combination of, I think, despair, anger, um, and also voicelessness, powerlessness. As you said, the, uh, the Republicans, the Democrats, they're all behind free trade. So who speaks? 
for these people who are being sideswiped badly by free trade. So that's where Bernie Sanders comes in, that's where Donald Trump comes in. So it's that combination, I think, of despair, hopelessness, um, the inadequacy of the support systems that you talk about, all of that comes together and what's actually driving this quite dramatic increase in um, mortality rates and in accompanying uh, sickness is actually alcohol use, drug use and suicide. So what seems to be happening is people who are in despair are turning to those as outlets, as comforts, and it's turning into an epidemic, uh, particularly in that group. And so that's what's driven this increase in death rates when everybody else's death rates are going down. You know, it, it's funny that uh, this never really gets a mention. You know, there, there have been so many mass shootings in the United States, and every time they focus on the individual, and now this, this you know, this, um, large group of large support that Donald Trump has and they kind of make fun of those people but they never look at the people who run the United States never look at the United States and say well maybe we're doing something wrong mm -hmm. and, and one of the things they're doing most wrong is the deliberate creation of inequality yes because income inequality has impacts on so many parts of our lives things you things people would never even assume um, they impact our health, they impact our happiness, they impact our intelligence. And, I mean, for somebody who's in public health, that must be something that you look into a lot. We do, and, and we're very concerned at, at all sorts of levels. So, the beginning with, um, if you're born into poverty, we, you're more likely to grow up in poverty, of course. So, it becomes a kind of self-perpetuating cycle, which is hard to break out of. People do break out of it but it's hard to break out. Um, it means you're likely to have uh, um, worse food, worse housing, uh, poorer education. More stress. More stress as a result of all of that. And the, the chronic stress translates into inflammatory uh, diseases into, uh, there's a process called psychoneuroimmunology, which basically says very simply that your brain through or your mind through your brain is connected to your neurological and your immune system. And so chronic stress through the hormonal system and the immune system affects your resistance to infections. And of course, the immune system is also involved in fighting cancer, in allergies, in other conditions as well. So what we see is that chronic stress arising out of poverty has serious negative health effects. I think that in both Canada and the United States, the best thing we could do to make our societies better is reduce income inequality and, and, and start from that. Yes. Um, so you agree? Are well, we doing absolutely. it? Absolutely. And, and I think that uh, you know, the, what drives inequalities in health is not people making bad choices for the most part. It's people having little or no choice to make, um, being surrounded by not just environmental and social conditions, commercial pressures too. If you look at where do you find a lot of fast food restaurants, you find them in lower income communities. Who has less access to parks and recreation? People who live in low income communities. So they don't have the opportunity to make healthy choices about physical activity, about being out in the parks and playing, about eating healthily, because the environment around them actually makes the, the unhealthy choice easy when what we should be doing is making the healthy choice easy. So if we make the unhealthy choice easy, we shouldn't be surprised if people make unhealthy choices. And that's what we do time and again. Another thing I've noticed as I walk around Victoria, and it's something you wrote about in a column a few months ago, is the increase in noise in our society. Yes. And really, it goes back decades. Um, and my thought of noise is that it's a, a major disturbance within our minds and within our, am I right or wrong? Does it have well, impact? It's interesting, you know, that column got more response than any other column I've written in the last 
it's been 16 months now. It's like noise is the big secret that nobody yes. ever talks about, but it's yeah. huge. It's, it is the ele one of the elephants in the room. It is, yeah. There's, there's a few of them, and that's certainly one of them. So, yeah, I got a tremendous response from that one, and uh, people are very upset about noise. Um, it's, it's not so much the physical noise. That we're not often exposed to damaging levels of noise. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in, in a sense of damaging our ears but it's just the, the constant presence of it. I mean, I notice it and it really ticks me off when I go to a restaurant and I can't talk to the people that I've gone to the restaurant with. I mean, why am I there? I'm there to enjoy a meal and talk to friends. I can't talk to my friends. The noise is too, too high. That disrupts social exchange. It disrupts social patterns. Uh, noise, certainly around uh, airports and, and heavy, uh, heavily used highways and so on. And again, who lives near those? low-income populations by and large. You want to find light, nice, quiet, leafy glades. It's not going to be in, in low-income neighborhoods. You know what, that is exactly true. You go to the offices of the super wealthy or the areas in which they live, yeah. and the first thing, or one of the things you notice is it's quiet, yes. it's peaceful. That's so important for our health. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's all of these things together that, that that drive our, our level of well-being. And um, I think what you're also seeing in the, in the, what you're seeing in the US, we have maybe not as bad, but I mean, if you look particularly here in BC, for example, the government's policy over the last decade, it seems to me, has been to keep people poor. So we had the lowest minimum wage for a long time. We have uh, the lowest level of, of um, uh, social assistance. Uh, we're the only province in the country that does not have a poverty reduction strategy. Trevor, we're going to have to leave it go with that, but thank you very much. Very important issues, and uh, we'll talk about it again next time. Thanks for watching this segment.